ahead and dive into the AFC South. Write my times down so I can stamp them and whatnot. We will start off with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, several websites, of course, I've gone through and aggregated and figured out all right, exactly what were the needs for the Titans. Obviously, they lost Corey Davis. Uh, they need some offensive line help. Um, they, they need safeties. They need tight end because John New Smith is now with the Patriots. The yeah. Titans will roll through who they got. First round, they took a chance, and they have done that multiple drafts in a row. Caleb mm-hmm. Farley, cornerback out of Virginia Tech. Dylan Raddins, North Dakota State. He was a second-round guy, offensive tackle. Uh, linebacker Monty Rice out of Georgia was in the third round. Another third-round pick, cornerback, um, which is more a slot cornerback, Elijah Molden from Washington. Des Fitzpatrick, wide receiver out of Louisville in the fourth round. Rashad Weaver out of Pittsburgh in the fourth round. Uh, some character issues there. As soon as he got drafted, I'm talking the next day, there was some domestic assault stuff going on, so who knows what's yeah. happening with that. Uh, Racing McMath out of LSU in the sixth round, wide receiver. And that Chris, that's that's your team. This is somebody that didn't even play. I was just about to say, no, this this shocked me out of all the LSU guys. I, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's just a freak athlete, and he thought, you know, I'll get on with the team and I'll, I'll figure this thing out. I don't know. That's just not how the NFL works. But every year we do find wide receivers that nobody's ever heard of from places that nobody's ever seen, and and they kind of yep. make their way in the NFL. Yeah. So maybe he can be one of those guys. That's a that's a tough it's a nut reach. to crack. But, I mean, sixth round, all you're doing is taking a bite out of the apple. Uh, the last right. one. You're, you're just taking yeah. guys based on measurables yeah. and, and athletic ability. Exactly. That's it. Uh, Brady Breeze, the yeah. safety out of Oregon, who I absolutely love, could not believe he fell to the sixth round. Um, so let's let's hit this yeah. up. Let's talk about it. In the first round, Caleb Farley, was the, was the chance that they're taking worth the risk? Because, obviously, he's had two back surgeries. Uh, there's a reason he fell to 22. But he if, if he stays healthy, which is a big if, he is the most talented cornerback in this draft. Do y'all agree? Is he healthy right now? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, he's healthy okay, right now. so he is healthy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> My thing with it, it, it's just weird. So here's what the Titans do. The Titans actually had three good cover corners. Their secondary wasn't bad because their corners were bad last year. They were bad because this team had a historically bad pass rush. They had the worst sack rate and pressure rate of any playoff team since 1970, or second worst, I think, like the 91 Bengals were worse. Something, something crazy like that. So then they go out. They get rid of all three. Adoree Jackson, shut down corner when he's healthy. I know he's been battling injuries. Malcolm Butler, I mean, we all know about Malcolm Butler. And Desmond King, whom they got in the slot, was really, really good for the Chargers, didn't really get his footing with the Titans. That's because he's got to cover someone for six seconds. So then they come out here. They wipe out their corners like, oh, we need a cover corner. No, you need a pass rush. So now you go out and you draft a guy who you don't know if he's going to be healthy. Is the talent there? Sure. You do absolutely nothing to help your pass rush and you expect your defense to be competent. So you're still going to have a horrible pass rush. Now you're going to have a patchwork secondary and maybe relying on an injured rookie corner. Rookie corners don't generally translate well their first year. It's a tough position to get used to in the NFL. So for me, I'm not big on the Titans. I do like the tackle they took in the second round. They obviously needed help there. But for me, I thought the Titans missed the mark, and I don't see how they're going to be any better next year than they are this year with the moves they made. Do you think that so, the it, it, let me let me ask this right quick because I I mean they had Vic Beasley, they had uh, Jadavian Clowney, like they they had guys that have produced yeah. in the past. Do you think this has anything to do with scheme as far as not being able to get pressure on that quarterback? Well, I mean, a lot of it could be scheme, and I mean, just guys before, the front seven was really really good. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just getting old and Jadavian Clowney. I'm so sick of Jadavian Clowney's crap. The dude holds out, thinks he's going to be some savior for some team. The dude's an absolute moron. Then he signs a one-year deal, gets one sack, two sacks, can't play every game. I think he's the most overrated. You know, he's one of these one-year deal guys, and that's what he's going to be for the rest of his career, and everyone wants him, and they shouldn't because he's not going to do crap for your team. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit of scheme, a little bit of age, health, obviously. I don't know that this whole division, it's going to be the defenses are going to be outside of the Colts. Maybe it's going to be a lot of bad defense in this division. So I'm going to be looking at overs for nearly every one of these teams next year, nearly every Sunday. I, well, I tend to agree. Chris, what do you yeah. think? Like, I think I think getting Rashad Weaver uh, will help. I, I think that he fell as far as he did because of yeah. all of the off field stuff. But again, that's another chance sure. that you're taking. And he's, he's not a guarantee, but he is somebody that can absolutely mm-hmm. pressure the quarterback. But, I mean, who knows? Monty Rice, linebacker out of Georgia, he certainly can get pressure. He did it at Georgia. Um, you know, I, I think that they did okay. Um, I'm not 
I, I will say that I don't like it, but I could see where if everything falls absolutely perfectly, it can be considered a good draft here in a couple of years. Uh, but I think it's going to take some time. I mean, they, they got some projects. Chris, what do you right. think? So, so I, I, I don't, this is a team that, that obviously <laughs> whiffed on their first round pick last year. And then they took another like, yeah. so, like this was, a, this is an organization that I think needed to say, we need a marquee piece here that can sit and stand and make this team better for a long period of time, regardless of what position it is. Okay. And, and I don't know that, that, that Caleb does that. The other thing is, is I'm not killing them though, for not helping their pass rush at 22. There's nobody in this draft. That's going to be a marquee yeah. pass rush player. This was the word. So, so I'm yeah. okay with them going after the DB position. I'm okay with that. At 22, there were still other DBs that I think I would rather have that I think are going to play a lot longer than than Caleb, you know. But but that's because you have you've had the debacles in the draft that you've had the last couple of years, and and yeah. I think at some point in time, you you keep taking these boomer bust guys and they're all bust. They're all bust. And and at at some point in time, you got to just take somebody safe, you know. Yeah I, yeah, I tend to agree with that. Like the uh, the Simmons thing from a couple of years ago, like he didn't get to play for almost the entire first season because of that torn ACL. Sure. But when he hit, like he's been pretty good on that defensive line. So mm-hmm. I, I think no, and, and Kyle was right about their problems. Their cover issues have nothing to do. You you and me talk about this all the time. I, it you don't you don't cover the best cover corners in the league. All come from teams that can pass the rush the passer. Every yeah. one mm-hmm. of them. You get. You might not get sacks, but if you're making that quarterback throw the football a, a second or two sooner than he wants to, then that helps your DB so much. And and you just you you the way you help your covers is you get pass rush. It's how you stop teams from throwing the football is with a pass rush. It's not with great cover corners. Um, and and until they can do that, but that's going to take time. They're either going to have to next year get aggressive in free agency which this might be some weird reset year for them. I don't know. And get aggressive in free agency because you just can't worry about drafting all these guys because they don't all pan yeah. out. And then yeah. and then you also have to spend money in the draft on them. Yeah. 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 All right, so I it's a, you, you like it or you don't like it, Chris? Uh, so I did all of these divisions, and I basically ranked every team how I like them and what they did okay. inside their division. I have them – I like them second – I think I like everything that happened in this division worse than every other division out there. Out of all eight of them, <laughs> I think these four teams did the worst job out of anybody. It's entirely nice. possible. It's entirely yes, it possible. Because the Titans, I don't like what they did, and I have them second, and that's only because Jacksonville, who we'll get to, got Trevor Lawrence. Sure. Yes. Sure. Let's, uh, let's move on. We will go with who got second place in the division uh, last year, and that would be... The Indianapolis Colts went 11 and five. Their needs, uh, per all these different sites, per all these people that that would know, offensive tackle, wide receiver, tight end, and cornerback. Uh, we will roll through right quick the list. Round one, they got Quiddy Pay, edge rusher out of Michigan. Round two, they got edge rusher Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt. They got tight end Kylan Grayson or Granson, excuse me, out of SMU in the fourth round. Sean Davis out of Florida uh, in the fifth round. Sam Ellinger, cornerback out of Texas in the sixth round. Michael Strachan out of Indianapolis, which is strange, in the seventh round. And then Will Freeze uh, out of Penn State in the seventh round. So um, we'll, we'll stick with, you know, the the day one and two and just kind of get an idea. Two edge rushers in the first two rounds and then no yeah. third round pick. It, this seemed rather strange to me um, when you have so many other needs. Um, obviously, you, you always need help, you know, with edge rush. And, and I get that. Quiddy Pay is great. Uh, Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt is actually a pretty good uh, a pass rusher, but at, you had so many other needs, it seemed odd to go with this strategy. Did, did you guys feel the same? 100%. 100%. And I th- look, they just addressed offensive line need today. They just signed Eric Fisher to a one year deal, what, about an hour ago. So that's a yeah. big signing for the Colts because they needed a left tackle with Anthony Costanzo retiring. Obviously, we know what happens to Carson Wentz when he's under pressure. He doesn't perform all that well. Most quarterbacks don't, but he really doesn't perform well when he's under pressure. And that poor kid's been running for his life for the last three years. 
But it is interesting. Two defensive ends right away. When I look at the Colts, they needed help in that secondary. I know Xavier Rhodes sort of played better last year than he did the year before in Minnesota, but they still need help in that defensive backfield. And look, we just talked about it. Helping your pass rush will certainly help your defensive backs. They uh, they needed help at linebacker, in my opinion. They need another wide receiver, in my opinion, here. Give Carson Wentz some weapons here. So I thought the draft was a little strange. I thought it was a little heavy on the defensive line. I don't necessarily think that was their biggest weakness last year. I mean, they brought in DeForest Buckner from the 49ers. That defense for the first half of the year was a top five defense. Yes. Then they just fell apart, didn't have enough depth. So, I mean, I guess for me, the Colts, I think, were a little bit better than the Titans. I don't know a lot about this Kalen Granson kid. From what I see everywhere else, it seemed like it was a reach and not not everyone was over, overall happy with that pick. And then, of course, Sam Ellinger, that poor kid, uh, you know, obviously going through a lot of stuff right now, which is really, really sad. Uh, I think it's okay. Quiddy Pay was probably, what, the second or third best pass rusher in the draft outside yeah. of the kid out of Miami, if, if I have my analysis right there. Uh, so I think it's all right. They helped out their defense a little bit. I, I'm more meh on the Colts. Eh, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, nothing really splash. I would have liked to see them do more to help Carson Wentz. Uh, but uh, defensively, I guess it'll be okay. Chris, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. Um, I, I like Quiddy Pay. I think, I think they got a good first round pick. And, and then the rest of this, I, you know, I don't really yeah. understand. This is a team that I did think needed a quarterback. This was a place where I thought would have been a good landing spot for a Kellen Mon, um, or, or somebody that I think is capable and can play in the NFL. Uh, Gary equates Sam Ellinger to Tim Tebow, 100%. which is he's just his throwing style is just not, not set up to be successful in the NFL. And I do not believe Carson Wentz is a good football quarterback. I just don't think he's good at football. I think the one year of magic that he had, he got hurt and Nick Foles had that same magic. I can't explain all that goes into that, but I know that I've seen a huge plate of Nick Foles. He's not good at football. I can't take (laughs) six months of what I saw and think that's his life. That's six months of magic and I can't explain it. But I saw six months of Carson Wentz do that, and and that's not real either. Okay, everything right. else is smoke and mirrors, and he's not very good. He's not accurate. He does he holds onto the football, and he doesn't have good decision making ability. Also, the first time in his life he ever faces real adversity in the locker room where somebody else takes his starting job, he whines and pouts and quits. Yeah, I don't want yeah. that guy on my team at all. So to get his backup as Sam Ellinger, that's. That's a that's a tough road to hoe. Well, don't forget uh, they got Jacob Eason from last year. You know, <laughs> Jacoby Brissett still there, I think. Yeah, Jacoby. no, Brissett's down in uh, uh, Miami. Miami now. Yeah. Oh, he left for Miami. He's back in Boston. Oh, Jacoby became a free agent, and, and he, there you go. See, I'm too many, too many oh, yeah, free agents. But uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm just I'm real down on this team, and and I now here's what's weird. I this is how I'm thinking about these draft picks and what I think this team should do. Now let's take effect that everything this organization has done under this new regime, Frank Wright and the front office there has been unbelievable. So the chances of me being wrong and them being right are far better. But what I know of these college players and what I know of what I've seen with the Colts and the players they brought in, I just don't know what they're doing. I thought they were really close to being a great team and the biggest anchor that they did was they put Carson Wentz on their football team and that's you know hold the whole boat I'm willing to tell I'm I'm willing to give a I like it grade to teams when I can understand their strategy there's no strategy here like there's it's just hey these players were available and we just took them because maybe they felt like they didn't have any holes but like they need weapons they need guys to be able to protect uh Carson Wentz they you know we we've seen it like Chris you know what we're talking about he he's Really bad when he has no protection. Um, he's not good. Yeah. But I also but think it's it could just be with protection. I will say though, he tries hard. That kid will <laughs> that he will sacrifice his body. He'll I'm die. So sorry, Carl. First. He he's a starting NFL quarterback. If you're I not trying, it, but... if you're not trying, <laughs> that, that can't be the baseline for you get to play. Is That's the only good thing the I most. can say. That I don't just know. Can't be it. Is is you want to do really good? Yeah. That no, just you're can't. completely right. You are Wentz, completely right, and you're way. right about Nick Foles, too. I always take a good opportunity to bag on Nick Foles. Nick Foles is absolute garbage at the quarterback position. He always has been. He always will be. I know he had that one year with the Rams. I, can't, oh. I can't explain it. I can't explain Here, what I, I will explain this with Chris. that team I, and the Eagles. I really I can't. I can explain it. Yeah. I can explain it. Here's It was the second season for him, 
and that was before everybody really got a good feel because he was no, still because developing. Nick Foles did the exact same thing, and we had years of film on him. There was something unique about that Philly football team. That there's yeah. something just strange. You know how I feel about Fletcher Cox. Like I think the they had the perfect combination of leadership. They didn't have yes. great skill players, but everybody that wasn't a skill player was an amazing football player. Well, you remember they that were, they that were one of the most run. talented teams in the league, and they just carried those guys just like the Bucks carried Brad Johnson years ago, just like the Ravens carry Trent Dilfer. Shitty quarterbacks win Super Bowls sometimes. The the yep. Super Bowl win was uh, an anomaly. It was crazy. Five hundred yards of offense for both you know teams, both quarterbacks, whatever. It was it was yeah. nuts because the defense got them to the championship game. Like Nick Foles was not good yeah. until the Super Bowl. Like it was, it was exactly. strange, and then defense disappeared for both teams. You got it yeah, exactly. We, we are getting off of the Colts here. Uh, all right. yeah, are, yeah. are all three of us saying we don't like it, or it's just? Eh. I think so. Yeah. It's meh. I mean, I would lean don't like. I'm leaning yeah. don't like, but oh. it's meh. But it, this is an organization I trust, so it's a weird feeling. So right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I I, I do trust Chris Ballard and and what he has done there, but uh, but this one was I'm not used to this from their drafts. Typically, I like what they do, but. Either way, yeah. we will move on, and we are moving to the Houston Texans. And last season, they went 4-12. <laughs> and 12. Their needs were cornerback, wide receiver, safety, tight end, and center. Obviously, we could have tossed in uh, qu- uh, quarterback. We could have tossed – I mean, it, it, the Texans their needs are overall. everything. Every single position they stink at. They don't yes. have a single good player on their roster, straight up. Brandon Cooks, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I, I will tell you this. <laughs> um, when you are trying to rebuild a roster, what you need is a ton of – Guys, you just need to take as many shots as you possibly can, trade down as often as possible, just draft as many dudes as you possibly can. And they traded up to go and get Nico Collins in the third round, a wide receiver. <laughs> they they wasted picks to go up and try and get guys in the third round. So their their draft was quarterback Davis Mills out of Stanford in the third round. Third round also, they traded up and got wide receiver Nico Collins out of Michigan. Tight end Brevin Jordan. Now I like that pick. That was pretty good in uh, in the fifth round. Uh, then they got Garrett Wallow out of TCU and Roy Lopez out of Arizona in the fifth and sixth round. And I don't understand any of this. This makes no sense. So maybe it wasn't all Bill O'Brien. Maybe that entire front office is just complete garbage. Right. Uh, g- well, give me well, your thoughts here. Well, if Bill O'Brien also didn't set them up very well. It's hard to have oh, yeah. a good draft when you don't have a first or second round. And we can all agree, Bill O'Brien's the one guy during the pandemic where we're like, hey, man, pull the mask down and cover up that thing. Like, don't let anything get in there. <laughs> he looks like he wouldn't care if he dropped a baby, I swear to God. Bill O'Brien <laughs> absolutely destroyed this franchise. I mean, that's what he did. He destroyed it. And then you come in, you go, okay, we don't have those picks. And Deshaun Watson wants out of here. Maybe we'll be able to trade him for a bunch of draft capital. And then, of course, uh, that's not going to happen. No one's trading for Deshaun Watson now. We don't even know if he's going to be able to play. Probably won't. He sh- looks like he should be suspended. I'm not buying his excuse. There's a little bit too much smoke there uh, for me to think he's completely innocent. It's just uh, kind of weird, and there's lots of jokes that we could have. That low-hanging fruit is all over the place, and that's almost a pun as well for what he was doing. So uh, you look at this team. Couldn't stop the run. Couldn't stop the pass. Couldn't run the football could throw the football because they had Watson. Now they're not going to be able to do that. So now it's supposed to be Davis Mills out of Stanford and what other? Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod. I mean, this is going to be probably be the worst team in the league. They're going to compete with Detroit for the worst team in the league. And it's sad when they they would look at Detroit and be jealous that they have Jared bleeping Goff. I mean, come on. I think Detroit right now would be like a seven point favorite and a new yes, site exactly. right now. I really do. Exactly. I really think do. About like, that. The, yeah, think Detroit's about that. a lot better than this team. Yes, this is going to be the worst team. And so I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do because they just don't have any capital. They had to go get some kind of quarterback. If you're going to trade up, I think you mentioned Kellen Mond, who went to the Vikings. That would have been somewhere where I make the move up, like, hey, let's get someone who can play. What the hell is Davis Mills out of Stanford going to do with this team? He's going to get killed. He's going to get yes. killed. Yes, He's going to be the next David Carr. He's going to get killed there. They have absolutely – I mean, Kiki QT, I, did he leave? He might have left. Brandon Cook. I mean, where the hell is he going to go with the football? Who's going to run it? This team is going to be an underdog in every single game they play, rightfully so. 
not really in love with the draft, don't understand why they're giving up draft, that you're absolutely right. They needed more and more and more picks. Instead, they waited on the Deshaun Watson thing too long. As soon as, soon as he said he wanted out, they should have said, this is our chance to get some picks back and rebuild this thing because there's no sense in paying a quarterback max dollars when the rest of your team is absolute garbage and you know you have no chance of winning anything. Uh, this front office has been the worst front office in the league for the last five years. They continue to do it this year. Big thumbs down for me on this draft and this whole organization. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. They, they were my fourth, and 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 it wasn't even close. They're they're probably one of the the, the worst in in all of the the whole draft. Um, some of that is I tried to give them a little credit of they are doing the best that they can with what they have. All of these draft picks that they should have are all taken away from them. Okay, right. moving, giving up a few picks late to, to get up a little bit in the third round. That doesn't bother me. Davis Mills pick doesn't bother me. The problem is, is there's no, there's nothing they could have done in this draft to, to have, to have impressed me, or I think even really to make their football team any better this year at all. I, I think yeah. they're really bad. I, I think their, their coaching staff is going to be, basically playing the whole game with their t- hands tied and and they're going to they're going to have to be responsible for what I believe is probably going to be an 0 and 16 team unless Deshaun gets to play now if Deshaun gets to play we have a whole different game changer because he played behind this team last year that weren't a whole lot different and and he made shit happen so um I do think he's one of the best football players in the league and you know I, but but I'm with you if he gets cleared by the league and somebody offers you two first round picks for him, you take it, you take it and you yep. don't even, you, you just say, thank you so much. Yeah. Let's just say if he gets cleared by the league, I'm going to go out and uh, do a few different things as well. Cause if that's okay, <laughs> then hell let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I can't do all the things he does. Cause I've told you boys this before I'm a grower, not a shower. So I can't be smacking him around like he was doing there, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I'll be surprised if he's not suspended at least six games. There's just no way he's not. Oh, yeah. So that was my question. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you specifically about him. Do you think, are we looking at, a year suspension? Are we looking at half a year? Are we looking at six games? Are we looking at what do we? Is there a world that you can conceive of that he doesn't play football anymore? It's it's really interesting. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, so for me, oh, what I think go. here is if Saller to anybody and admits guilt, he's he's. Are we back? Are we back? Do we freeze up? Okay, yep. I, yeah. I will say, uh, if he pays a single dollar in a settlement. He's getting suspended for at least six games because he's admitting guilt right there. That's definitely against the person. I would imagine that's against the personal conduct policy, touching people with your stuff while they're rubbing you. I would assume is against the rules of the NFL conduct policy. And if this goes where it's he's going to go to court and keep battling this in the court of public opinion, you could very well see him end up on that commissioner's exemption list, which is nowhere you want to be. And that'll be at least a half a year. It's a really dicey situation. I will be stunned if he is a starting quarterback week one for the Texans. Well, so I'm not worried about him being a starting quarterback. I don't think that's actually a realm of possibility, but the commissioner exempt list, I would rather be there than I would rather sure. be suspended because the, the team has to pay me. And so exactly. that big contract I get, I'm not missing one penny until I come mm-hmm. off the commissioner's exempt list. Yep. yep, completely agree. And it won't, and and he's it won't won't hold you, out but, anyway. So, but I think if he pay if he pays a single dollar in settlement, I think you see that suspension slapped on the next day. But but don't you think that would be a better situation for him? Put you in his shoes, forget it, and and say you can pay all this out and know that you'll get a six game suspension and then it's all over with and yep. you can then fight for your trade and and get on to a better team everybody knows what they're buying now they know what they're getting the Texans know what they're selling and yep. and and you can move on with your life do you think the, yep. just the ability and the to to breathe again and say sure. we at least have understanding of this is what my life looks like yeah, I would be doing that right now. And that's it. I would have too. I would be doing. I would be doing that right now. You know, the reports that they asked him two weeks before this went public to hey pay this. I would have been like, yeah, how much and yeah. where and yeah. to whom? Yeah. Now, because I don't so now think he's got to put the pink hats on. He's yeah. got to be women's rights, women's voting rights, breast cancer awareness, everything that you can possibly be to support women. He needs to start doing right now. Yeah. Pay that settlement. Eat your medicine. Move on and stop getting massages for Christ's sake. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> or, or just find one professional and have them come to your house. Exactly. And that, let that one person be your expert and let them yeah. do it forever. 
Yes. Yeah. Stop asking waitresses at the Chili's that you that you went to in Houston to uh, you know don't, come to your house. Don't find your drink. massage therapist on Snapchat. Let's not. You should do not that. do That's the that. You should not do that. <laughs> All right. And by <laughs> the way, by. we uh, we will have a uh, a Houston attorney on with us next week to discuss all this Deshaun Ooh. Watson stuff. So uh, so everybody. You know, if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Like the video, share it out, all that good stuff. Make sure you are subscribed on the podcast and on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we will we will have a Houston based attorney that is uh, pretty knowledgeable about this situation, and he will fill us in on on what's going on with it. Uh, we'll move yeah. on and let's talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is the last team in the AFC South. They went one and fifteen last year behind Gardner Minshew and. Uh, my God, who was the other quarterback that played for him? Uh, was it Glennon? Uh, Mike Mike Glennon played yeah. a little bit. They had, uh, Jordan Luton as well started Oof. for them a few games. They almost beat the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay with yes. Jordan Luton at quarterback. Yeah, they they fact. actually uh, they they fought hard in a lot of games. I'll say that uh, they could not yeah. get over the hump, so they end up one and fifteen. They get the number one overall pick. They bring in Coach Urban Meyer, who has. Oh redone the entire staff of course when a new coach comes in that's typically what happens but he's got a lot of college guys and a lot of old school NFL guys he's looking at this a lot differently than than probably most NFL front offices will look at things their needs yeah. uh, at least per the online sources safety tight end defensive tackle and quarterback um you know I, Gardner Minshew I think is a lot of fun but obviously I do believe that Trevor Lawrence is an upgrade we'll roll through the picks that they got and oh, they've yeah. got quite a few Quarterback Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson, running back Travis Etienne out of Clemson, both first round picks. Uh, we will we will talk about the Etienne pick here momentarily. Quarterback Tyson mm-hmm. Campbell out of Georgia in the second round, and then another second round pick, offensive tackle Walker Litter a little out of Stanford. You've got safety Andre Cisco out of Syracuse in the third round. Jay Tufele out of USC, defensive interior lineman. Uh, edge rusher Jordan Smith out of UAB in the fourth round. Fifth round tight end Luke Farrell and wide receiver Jalen Camp out of Georgia Tech. Uh, that was sixth-round pick, 209 for that one. Trevor Trevor Lawrence, obviously, home run hire, or home run draft, whatever, on that. Running back Travis yeah. at the end of the first round, eh, not a big fan of that one. Um Go ahead, Kyle. I'll let you uh, jump in on it on it first. Yeah, you're so I like Travis Etienne as a player, and I was really yeah. looking. I thought Buffalo would have been a great landing spot for him because he is explosive and would fit in with that offense perfectly. The reason I didn't like it for Jacksonville, first of all, you have a young running back who really set the world on fire last year, an undrafted kid, and you have so many. You're a one in fifteen football team. You have so many damn holes to fill, and they brought in Carlos Hyde as well. So you have a good running back room already, and then you bring in Travis Etienne. So what are you going to do with them? You're going to use him like a Lavisca. You have a, a switch yeah. blade guy in Lavisca Chenault already. So I'm not exactly sure how that fills any needs. And then that second round pick, Tyson Campbell. I, I like that they took a defensive back. But for me, I'm like, look, Asante Samuel Jr. is sitting out there who just seems like a ball hawk out of Florida State, and you take the wrong guy from Georgia. Georgia, I mean, Georgia never wins big games. Georgia just stinks all the time. Every time I see them (laughs) in a big game, I'm betting against Georgia every single time. So, obviously, Trevor Lawrence is a home run pick. You know, John Elway, Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type prospect here. So, you love that. Question if they're filling the holes there uh, later on. I'm not real happy with rounds – the end of round one, round two. Walker Little, I like smart, intellectual offensive linemen. So I think yeah. that's – anytime you get an offensive lineman out of Stanford, you assume, look, they're a smart guy. They're going to understand how to play. They'll pick up the scheme quickly. So I like all that. So it's pretty 50-50 on here. I say overall I like it because they got, you know, what everyone thinks is going to be the next big thing at quarterback, and that's always a good place to start with your franchise. But definitely some reaches there at the end of round one and round two that make me a little less, little less excited about it than I normally would be. So this is Urban Meyer, a college coach that doesn't understand how to put together an actual team because he's never had to do it. He's had recruiters that actually go out and help him. I bet Urban has never actually sat down and recruited an offensive lineman. I'm going to bet his (laughs) line coach and his OC has always done that. And, And because he has been at Florida, especially while at Florida and at Ohio State, maybe at Utah he had to beat the bushes a little bit. But at Florida and Ohio State, those are two places to where if you can get them into school with Florida and then at Ohio State, if you want the best offensive lineman in your state or in your area, you're just going to get them. You don't have to recruit them. You have to say, I'll take that guy, that guy, and that guy and be done with it. 
He doesn't understand. He's always had to work hard to out recruit your Alabamas and your USC's and your Oklahoma's for the best running backs, the best skill players. The running back is the last piece of the puzzle that you go out and get. When the whole meal is ready, it's the parcel you sprinkle on top to make it look pretty. That's it. That's it. You can find running backs. That die, the, the dude that they're running back now was a thousand yard rusher last year. He let the league on fire, and I don't know his damn name. Okay, James Robinson. Because it doesn't matter. Because if, right. if he <laughs> fell off the truck tomorrow, they would just plug somebody else in there with another rando named James Robinson. That's like that sounds like a made up name. If a cop asked me, "Who are you? What are you doing?" That, that this yeah. is like two words that are coming out of my mouth. Okay, yeah. it is yeah. like yeah. That, like this is the I just don't understand spending <laughs> first round picks on these play. Not that the players themselves aren't great. It's right. irrelevant. It's what you do as opposed to it's the demarcation of who the next guy is behind you. When there are yeah. dudes that nobody knows their names and they're top five or top 10 running backs in the league, then everybody who sits behind Kyle Shanahan and runs the football is going to be a top five running back. It doesn't matter where you are, what you came from, what size you are. You could be big. You could be little. You could be fast. You could be slow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's Kyle Shanahan's going to make you a top five running back. It's what you're going to be. So why spend draft capital like that when you have lots of other needs? Urban Meyer doesn't understand that because he's never actually put together an entire team. Let me, let me play devil's advocate here. You're bringing in your number one pick, Trevor Lawrence. You want to make sure that he is super comfortable. So you go and get his best buddy from Clemson with your, your other first round pick to make sure that you can actually get him. Now I don't believe that a guy that's never been on the roster before pick your second first another first round yeah that's pick. a little bit of an issue I'll, I'll admit what that. the hell are we doing what does Trevor <laughs> Lawrence know about about running yeah. an NFL franchise uh, nothing what does he know nothing. about that locker room you I, I agree thing. with you I agree with you I I don't like the pick there but uh but that's uh, to me that's the only logical if we're explanation trying to make somebody feel comfortable you know what we just took you first overall we're about to pay you an obscene amount of money and then we're still going to tell you you're carrying the the, the shoulder pads for everybody rookie yeah. okay like no, no 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 we've made you feel comfortable already by giving yeah. you the first round pick and the first overall pick and the first first overall money all right i'm not bringing in your friends just because they're your friends if like like you don't get to say oh well joe burrow got jamar chase and you don't get to say like these other like guys here all of those receivers that they brought in were top tier talent anyway at a position that you actually right. need top tier talent running back is not that position and and this is just not what you do you don't do that to make him feel comfortable screw that uh the luke farrell pick yeah. in the fifth round uh was not a big fan of that obviously because brevin jordan was still on the board he went two picks later to the texans and and he was a much more productive yeah. tight end at Miami than Luke Farrell was at Ohio State. Now, obviously, Farrell played for Urban Meyer at Ohio State, but he wasn't even on, like, the PFF draft board. He was not a guy that was being uh, looked at to really be drafted. He he was maybe a seventh-round guy, and they took him in the fifth round in the top 150 picks. That didn't make sense to me. Uh, I do like Jordan Smith out of UAB. Like, he's not the the most athletic guy. Uh, Andre Sisco out of Syracuse, that's a guy that consistently plays out of position but is, like, boom or bust if you can get him to uh, if you can teach him a little better about where he's supposed to be on the field uh, he's more of a ball hawk and and I think that's good they you know you're you're in the third round take some shots like go and get a guy that's immensely talented and maybe you can uh, develop him Jay Tufeli out of USC I like him um, so I like him a yeah. lot too I think that's I mean I don't think every pick they made was bad I just can't. I just it, can't it, get the behind. only way. You wasted a first round yeah, pick. The only way a team that's not very good. The only yeah. way that the Travis Etienne pick will work yep. is if you turn him into uh, a unicorn. Basically, if you turn him into uh, Christian McCaffrey or something like that, like where he is as effective as a yep. wide receiver as he is as a running back, and and that's something that uh, there's and, one and guy. Even, even economically, your James Robinson was an undrafted free agent that you're paying like two hundred grand a year, and you're like, you know what? We want to pay another running back a shit ton of money because we drafted him in the first round. When your secondary was one of the worst secondaries I've ever yeah. seen in my yeah. life last year, their defense they couldn't stop anybody. And you're like, uh, I mean, you want to make Trevor Lawrence comfortable? 
get him the ball back and so he's not standing on the sideline for eight minutes while teams drive up and down the field seven times a game and put up 45 points. Take the pressure off in that way, not giving him his buddy running back. Who gives a damn about a running back? Nobody. <laughs> get, You're absolutely, get, get, get absolutely right. Nobody cares about a damn running back. Yeah, if you if you ask the quarterback what would they rather have, a great running back or extra possessions, they're going to say extra possessions. Give yeah. me more shots at the apple. Give yeah. me more downs all day long. And so if you get me yeah. a defensive Absolutely. player that can get me the ball back and, and stop the other team's offense and make them punt or, or with a turnover, I'll take that all day long over almost any – outside of an elite wide receiver, they would take that over everything else. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.